We've discussed why Common Core, but what is Common Core really, and how has the math changed? We're going to take a look at some of the ways that math has changed from the 1950s to today's Common Core methods. So back in the 1950s, if you were learning math, you learned old math. Then with the birth of the space race, the United States completely changed the way math was taught and the way science was taught, and that was called new math. Now that we're in the 2000s and we're in a 21st century global community, we're learning Common Core. And there's totally relevant reasons why we change to that as well. So we're going to take a look at how one example of how Common Core has changed the way math looks when students are completing problems. We're going to take a look at some subtraction problems. So old math, when you were finding the difference, you would use the borrow and pay back method. So you would try to take five from four, but you can't. So you would borrow one from the two and the four would become a 14. But you would pay back that one by subtracting an additional one in the next column. 14 minus five is nine. Then you'd go to your tens place. Two, the two cannot take away one or six, so the two becomes a 12 and you pay back in the hundreds place. So 12 minus one minus six is five. Then you go to the hundreds place, seven minus one minus three is three. So people just thought that borrow and pay back method was just memorizing an algorithm. So when new math came along in the late 1950s, they brought on regrouping. And this is what we think of as subtraction now, like the standard algorithm way. So we try to take five from four, but we can't. So we have to borrow from the tens place. That two becomes a one, and then that four becomes a 14. 14 minus five is nine. And then we look at the tens place. This is all regrouping because you're taking one from one place value and regrouping it to the other. So if we're looking at the tens place, we have one minus six. Well, you can't take away six from one, so you borrow from the seven and the seven becomes a six. Once that six gives that hundred to the tens place, that one becomes an 11. 11 minus six is five, and then we move over to the hundreds place. Six minus three, is three, so we end up with 359. But again, students were becoming complacent with a standard algorithm, and people were worried that they were just memorizing certain ways to do things. And that's when Common Core came along. So the Common Core method, this is just one way to solve the difference. One of the strategies you can use with the Common Core method to find the difference is counting up. And I say one of the strategies because with the Common Core method, there are multiple strategies for multiple types of problems. Now this type of problem looks very different from the others. We're going to start with those two numbers, but we're going to put them in different order. So we have to get from 365 to 724 by counting up. It's almost like making change when you're at a restaurant or a cashier, making change and counting up. So you'd start with 365 and you'd add five to get 370. From 370, you would add up 30 to get to 400. Notice what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to add to make numbers easier for me to deal with. So then we go from 400, we add 300 to get 700. 700 plus 24 is 724. From here, we add up all of those elements that we just added, and we're gonna get 5 plus 4 is 9, 3 plus 2 is 5, and then we bring down the 3. So we have the exact same answer, just a different method of getting it. Although math has changed over the years and there's different strategies that we can use, now Common Core brings different strategies for those students to have different tools in their toolbox when they're trying to solve different problems. It makes them incredible critical thinkers and problem solvers. So even though things have changed, United for Math is going to be there with you through those changes to help you solve those problems and learn those strategies. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.